Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the South Derbyshire series, a district of Derbyshire which stretches from Leicestershire to Staffordshire, containing 50 civil parishes. Here's one of them for you. Welcome back to South Derbyshire everybody. Now today I'm going to take you to one of the smallest villages that you can find anywhere in South Derbyshire. But do you know what? It's probably one of the most well known and the reason for that is this field you can see behind me. I know it looks like nothing but this field becomes important at certain times of year and I'm willing to bet that a few of you out there have actually been on this field before depending on what the time of year is. Welcome to Catton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Perhaps the smallest one I've done so far in Derbyshire, welcome for the second time this year to a place called Catton. Last time we were in the East Riding, this time we're on the banks of the River Trent. The name Catton possibly derives from an Anglo-Saxon farmer named Catter, but may also be named Cat as a literal reference to the furry animal some of us keep as pets. It later became Chetton by the time it was recorded in the Doomsday Book. Catton Parish is a highly rural area consisting mainly of farmland and a lot of parkland that belongs to Catton Hall Estate. Its most notable building is Catton Hall itself, located in the far west of its boundaries alongside the river. The rest of Catton is made up of a handful of residential cottages and former lodges, along with a small number of farms. Despite not having a great deal to film, Catton still does have something we can talk about at length. Annually, this is the part of Derbyshire that is descended upon by thousands of people attending large-scale public events held within Catton Park. Some of them are well known, others not so, but one thing's for sure, if you haven't been here for one of them, you might well know of their existence. Names like Bearded Theory, Bloodstock and the Derbyshire Sausage and Cider Festival are all associated with Catton and bring in lots of money for the local economy. Let's learn a bit more about them all. We begin our brief visit to Catton on the road from Walton-upon-Trent, approaching the settlement from the north. On our right momentarily, there's a field which quite a few of you out there will know depending on the time of year. It doesn't have a name, not as far as I can tell anyway, but I've dubbed it the Festival Field. The field is part of Catton Park which holds large public events and caravan rallies throughout the year, mainly in the summer. These include things like the Derbyshire Sausage and Cider Festival, one of the biggest events on the Derbyshire calendar. There's also Bearded Theory, an independent music festival which has no sponsorship or branding that takes place every May. Catton Park Horse Trials, the Festival of Fireworks, Trail Endurance Races and Classic Motor Shows have all taken place here too. 
So what about the rest of Catton? Well, it's not a village in the traditional sense, let me tell you. If you follow the road south from the field, you'll pass Catton Hall. It lies in the centre of the estate to which the parkland belongs. Catton has very few other buildings, and there are no substantial areas of built-up development. It's also a tough one to walk around. There are very few public footpaths across the Catton estate, and this road is one of only two that are publicly accessible. Catton Parish does have a few other scattered landmarks, but they're mainly on private land. For example, in the southeast of the parish, there's a former Microlite airfield, which is now only used by large model aircraft. The local businesses out here are centred around farming. It's not uncommon to see plenty of tractors here. Other historic industries included some quarrying and a brick kiln pit to the south of the parish, close to Catton Park, of which there are no above ground remains. It would take me forever and a day to go through all the festivals held at Catton Park, so here's just a handful of them. First up, there's the Derbyshire Sausage and Cider Festival, which in 2024 is celebrating its 10th anniversary. It bills itself as the Midlands' number one family festival, and often sees big-name tribute acts like Bjorn Again, the must-see parody band of 1970s Swedish pop group ABBA. Then there's Bearded Theory, which is also known as Bearded Theory Spring Gathering. Bearded Theory began life at the Knocker Down pub near Carsington Water in 2008. It was held over two nights, and it overloaded the capacity of the venue. Since then, it's grown massively, and has moved venue several times as it's grown. Since 2014, Catton Park has been its home, after a brief spell at Kettleston Hall in Amber Valley. It's won several awards, including the UK's Best Family Festival in 2016, and the UK's Best Small Festival in 2013. For seven years, Back 2 Festival has been held at Catton Park as well, usually in June. In 2023, it filled the air around Catton with classic tunes from the 80s, 90s and 2000s music scene. Away from music, Catton Park also hosts the Festival of Fireworks every September, one of the largest and most prestigious firework events in the country. It features four leading companies who showcase their skills by creating spectacular displays to music, an unforgettable experience which can be enjoyed by the whole family. Catton Park Horse Trials are also held here. Founded in 1993, this event made its comeback this year, after a five-year hiatus. The 2023 effort was part of the BEDE event stable. Those are the main ones, but Catton hosts loads more, including things like classic car shows and caravan rallies, and even more obscure stuff like moth trapping and identification in early August, a bat walk in the autumn time, and a lantern parade in October. Catton Park is the ideal event space for all. And here's another event that takes place here at Catton, and that would be Bloodstock. And apparently that must be on at some point uh, in the not too distant future because there's signs for it pointing you in the direction of the field where we began. Now, as you might have already guessed from that opening section, this one's not going to be anything like normal. There's no actual walking route around this place because you can't really walk it. And this is why, because the Catton Estate, as you can see, this is the entrance to, entrance to it, is private. I, there's no way on earth I can go down there with the camera in my hand. Catton Hall is down there though, which is obviously the biggest and most important property on the estate. Unfortunately though, I can't see it with my own two eyes. There are two entrances to it. There's that one there, and then there's this one over here as well. I think this one actually does say Catton Hall on it. That one I don't think does, but yeah. Here we go, look, this one here. This says Catton Hall on it, just here. So I hope you're ready for some more special sections because there's gonna be another one in a moment all about Catton Hall. There we go. There isn't really a village to speak of, to be honest with you here. It really is just all about the hall and all about the Catton estate and all the events that take place on the field and the parkland that surrounds it. It's a very unusual place here in Derbyshire, but like I said at the top, it's one of those places that people will know because of all the events that happen here. So let's talk a bit about uh, Catton Hall now in another special section. And I do have something a bit different to finish with in a few moments. Catton Hall is a country house, and it's the biggest residence in Catton Parish. It's a Grade 2 listed building standing at the centre of its extensive grounds. 
The hall is historically associated with the Horton family who owned the manor of Catton in the 15th century. Several members of the family served as High Sheriff of Derbyshire. In the 19th century, Anne Horton, heiress of the estate, married Robert Wilmot, creating the Wilmot Horton family. Catton Hall is now owned by the Nielsen family, descendants of the Wilmot Hortons. It stands where the original manor house was in the 15th century and was built in 1745 for Christopher Horton. The building is nine bays wide and three stories high. Behind the hall is a chapel built in 1892 which has a Norman font, possibly originating from Catton's church which is mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Catton Hall holds regular tours of the house and surrounding gardens, mainly during the spring and summer. Because there's very little else that's filmable in Catton, to end this episode I chose to hop over the border into Staffordshire. Welcome to Croxall Lakes, a large nature reserve which straddles Derbyshire's border with Staffordshire. The reserve is dominated by two large lakes situated at the joining of the River Trent, the River Tame and the River Mees. The site was formerly quarried for sand and gravel and is part of a complex of restored wetlands in the Trent Valley floodplain. Now managed by the Staffordshire Wildlife Trust, the reserve attracts large numbers of wildfowl and wading birds. And the lakes are surrounded by lots of trees and you can walk around them using a well-marked footpath. Croxall Lakes can be found off the A513, the main road from Tamworth which runs to the south of Catton. It crosses Chetwind Bridge which carries it over the Trent. It was built by the Colebrookdale Company in 1824. And Croxall Lakes are named after Croxall Village, also in Staffordshire. To get to that, we go under part of the Cross Country Route, a railway line that links Bristol to York, one of the longest in the country. Let's head for Croxall and I'll see you there next week as we make our return to Staffordshire. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.